All right, here we go. Let's talk about spoilers. So, you can see on my car, I have a non-sport model or the base model. So I believe the spoilers on the Cur 3.2 in England was part of the sport pack. That's what they called it there. I think it was just in the US there was no sport pack, but being that it was the 80s, really most of these had it. Um, but why do they have it? And uh, let's look at some data. Okay. Well, this is the side section of an aircraft wing, which these are designed to produce lift. And the shape of the 911, the vintage 911s, produce lots of it. I would say we don't really have this because we kind of have a flat bottom, but we do have an angle here. So this is probably more indicative of the shape of a 911. We definitely don't have a full flat bottom, but it is a little rounded here, which would kind of look like that. A little rounded on the bottom and it's angled back, producing lift. But how bad is it? Or how bad can it be? Let's talk. All right, so this is from the Spiel Porsche newsletter, and this was written by Alan Caldwell. He seems to know a lot more about aerodynamics than I do, and he published an interesting chart that I'd like to show you. So let me grab that and we'll discuss it. I wanted to make sure I cited my source. I'll put links to this on online, but um, this is from the article I just referenced. So essentially, with no spoiler, at the front axle, basically at 90 miles an hour, it would be about 50 pounds of lift as you and it goes up exponentially so at 150 miles an hour it's probably you know 145 pounds of lift so then we had the ducktail so of course we don't have the Carrera tail but with the ducktail there is still lift but there's no downforce it reduces lift it doesn't create actual downforce. So the ducktail helps, but it's not a, you know, cure-all for it. Um, but then the turbo has a huge reduction in lift. So really not noticeable, probably until you hit the mid triple digits. That's just in the front. Okay, so here's the rear. So no spoilers, so there's much more lift at the back. So at 150 miles an hour, it's close to 300 pounds of upward force. Ducktail, again, does it eliminate it, but it reduces it by approximately half. Turbo, a little more. And then the 3.3 turbo. So this must be the first version of the turbo tail. And then this is the the big one, the, the turbo the turbo T tray, I guess is what it's called, which even reduces it more. And the how they got to these, from what I read, was they basically just did some testing, and they just lifted the lid like this. They just lifted the hatch at different angles. I have the graph for that, but I don't really know how to read it. But that's how they started cluing in on that this this shape basically creates an airfoil. I uh, got one other thing to share. I'll be right back. So I'm going to butcher this French name, but he's a famous racer. Racer Le Mans wrote the Porsche 911 story. His name is Paul Freire. So I hope I did my best to ruin that. Anyway, it shows. Basically, the drag coefficient of Carrera 3.2s with the front dam and rear spoiler and without. 
So these cars are pretty much aerodynamic bricks. And that's what we get for getting a car that was originally penned in the early 1960s. So 0.414 uh, with the front air dam and rear spoiler. So just note that the front air dam and rear spoiler reduce drag. A lot of times spoilers increase drag. Um, and then without 0.423. So yes, it increase without them. And then I believe this probably stands for coefficient of lift in the front. So 0 0.010 in the front with, with a front spoiler, 0.112. I wonder if these could be correlated to like weight like the other one, but you could see the back is a dramatic uh, decrease in lift. So interesting stats here. Um, I don't really know what a lot of that means. It, probably the graph summed it up well that we have lift on these cars and the spoilers just reduce it. So what does it mean in the real world? And uh, I'll talk to you about that. We'll wrap it up. So looks or performance, where do you sit? So this is the way this car was ordered. I left it the way it looks uh, as, as it was delivered. Just a standard non-sport, as I said. So someone had to have wanted this in the 1980s because I don't think anyone wanted anything without spoilers in the 1980s unless you were a real, real traditionalist and didn't care about performance. So things kind of come full circle. I think these are in vogue now. Of course, I would never turn anything down with spoilers, but, you know, I'm not going to change this. So, in my experience driving it, do you need front and rear spoilers? And before I answer that, the official Porsche edict on this is that front goes with rear together or nothing. Some people not blessed by Porsche, but they will put the front rubber air dam on and nothing in the back. And then it's said that that's okay. So yeah, leave a comment if you're running that. Definitely the no-no is running a rear, some sort of a rear spoiler without a front air dam. So that's the no-no. I'm obviously running neither, so I wouldn't know. But I can tell you, to get back to it, what what is it like without it? So in normal driving around town, obviously you don't notice it. So in case you're not aware that the spoilers create more downforce with wind as you're passing through the wind. And I'm in Florida. I wouldn't call it wind. We're passing through basically a soup of water vapor with little air because we have such high humidity. But short answer, when you hit triple digits, you start to notice it. I don't take turns at triple digits. So if I'm on the highway, I'll notice the front wheels may get a little bit lighter with just me in the car. But you wouldn't notice not having the rear spoiler unless you're taking a high speed turn. And it probably would feel more planted like if you're taking a big sweeper at like 90 or 100 miles an hour. So that's it in a nutshell. In a straight line, you may notice something over 100 miles an hour. I've had it, obviously, I'm not a saint, I've had it faster than that, but that's when you start to notice it, and it doesn't feel as planted. Now, if you just wanted to go to a local bar and, you know, go find a, uh, a maybe a uh, well-endowed woman of 
heavy weight, maybe in the 250 pound range, and say, would you like to ride in my car? That's cheaper than the spoiler, but then you'd have to get rid of her. She wouldn't want to leave. Anyway, the extra weight creates ballast on the car, and it will feel more stable with people in it, from what I have gathered going on my trips and having passengers. It definitely feels more planted on the highway with more people in it. But that's not to say that the car is unstable at all. At normal speeds, it is not. And it is not unstable at high speed. But I would say if I was uh, running Autobahn speeds, 120, 130 miles an hour for extended periods of time, and yes, I have driven on the Autobahn, not this, but I have driven other cars on the Autobahn, I probably would want them. Um, but we don't, in the U.S., most of us don't hit those speeds for extended amount of time. You may just touch it and then back off. So for little blurps, it's fine. If you're racing and things like that, and I'm sure if you are a racer, please leave your experience in the comment section below so we could all learn from your knowledge. But I'm just saying for the street, good for most of the driving and Porsche knew what they were doing. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Take care. Bye.